Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the History of Fan Anime. I'm your host, William Chow, and in today's episode, we're going to get back into a new decade, okay? So I already did the top 30 OEVA's TV shows and movies for the 1980s. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the 1990s, okay? So I'll start from 1990 and work all the way up to uh, 1999 and go through each and all these significant titles from every single year and then build a big top 30 count. So again, uh, this is going to take me a while. It took me almost 14 episodes to do it uh, for 1980. And this one probably will be a lot longer because there's now the, uh, you know, the new generation. Like, you know, my generation, um, you know, started in the 80s. And of course, we had to, you know, suffer through a lot of things. Um, uh, like no translations and, uh, you know, very hard distribution, uh, you know, with the VHS tapes and all that stuff. But now in the night in the 1990s, um, you know, the anime companies started kicking in. So, you know, you know now there's uh, basically uh, a, a source that a lot of people can get certain, certain types of animes and that kind of stuff. A uh, big uh, boom in the new uh, OAVAs and uh, animes and movies that sort of came out. So a lot more titles we can deal with. So, you know, it's going to be a little bit harder than uh, 80s just because of the sheer volume. But again, we'll go through it all and it will make this list of the top 30 titles for you. So I want to remind you people to go down below, click like and click subscribe. And if you want to make a comment, you know, that's all. These are all good things that you can do to help support the channel and, uh, you know, to make the, the YouTube algorithm work properly. All right. Uh, if you want to support me financially, I do have the PayPal and the play, uh, Patreon links down below. I've got some new episodes um, with my, you know, dabbling in, uh, in working with uh, some AI. And of course, I've also uh, begun talking about my trip to China in more detail and more personal aspects of it um, because, you know, I, I can't post that kind of stuff on YouTube here. Workings of the 1990s and what animes um, will be end up on our top 30, all right? So without further delay, let's begin. Okay, so we're going to 1991 and uh, this is the second season, so this is the spring session. And uh, right away, we go to the new TV shows. Uh, we start off with uh, City Hunter 91. So again, uh, you, know, you know, every year it seems to be very, very popular since it first came out in, the, in like 87, where basically now we've got City Hunter, City Hunter 2, City Hunter 3. Now we have the City Hunter 91 series. Again, a short series, 13 episodes, uh, but it's starting um, you know, this uh, season. And again, more episodes of uh, you know, the antics of Yo. And uh, I think that some people may, may notice that the, the art style has just changed a slight bit, but still the same sort of, uh, you know, action comedy that, that, that uh, you know, I've always liked. And it's good that now that not all the episodes are now translated, because now some, I mean, I remember watching some of the episodes, and they're pretty easy to figure out. I mean, you know, it's, it's your, you know, your general sweeper type of shows, like, you, you know, you get shows like, like The Equalizer, you know, heck, even things like, like, like you know, the A Team and Magnum PI, and and the list goes on and on and on. You know, of these type of, um, you know, you know, Private Eye type of shows. So, you know, the, the plot's, you know, pretty predictable. But, you know, some of the nuances are, are you know, now that with translation, um, it, it really is, is is helpful. Again, that's so that's you know, that's one of the series I, I always like uh, going back to and. You know, finishing up some of the episodes. That they, uh, as I said, we did a pretty random assortment of episodes based on popularity and and think how things related. And again, whatever my translator wanted to translate, um, definitely that you know, that that's had a big deal, uh, you know, to do with it. But yeah, definitely, Cinder was one, one of my favorite uh, series when you know, you know going up, uh, you know, uh, again getting started with anime. So uh, definitely, uh, I'm glad that uh, more of this thing came out. Uh, the next one is uh, yeah, Future GPX Cyber Formula. Now this is again, all getting you know sort of futuristic racing type of show, and I know that uh, in Animedia, um, this was like really heavily pushed. Okay, this is like you know um, the companies and that kind of stuff are really kind of um, you know trying to push this on us, uh, you know racing and that kind of stuff. But you know you know I don't think racing things and stuff really became a really big deal until things like Initial D sort of kind of came out. Um, because, you know, even things like more bike racing and, 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 you know, even just regular car, like circuit racing type of thing, never really caught on, you know, the, the, that, that sort of concept, um, whether it was F1 or, um, you know, uh, things like, uh, you know, Circuit Angel and things like that, you know, they just, they were there, but not a lot of people sort of really got into them. So, um, you know, and again, 
without any sort of uh, you know large interest of people re- recording it or uh, distributing it. Uh, but again, it was hard to get episodes, so people never translated it, and so therefore it just sort of you know fell by the wayside, right? And the last thing I'll just quick make a quick mention is the the, the anime Hitsu. Um, this one is another one of those kind of it's based off of a literary work. So just like things like Anna Green Gables and and uh, you know Sherlock uh, you know Hotly Holmes and um, you know Tom Sawyer, a version of basically the book uh, The Secret Garden, okay, by Francis uh, Hudson Burnett, okay, and it's just an adaptation of the characters and the stories and whatnot in an animated form. And again, at this time, this was a really big thing. It's just hey, let's just take some sort of historical thing, whether or not it's like the Three Musketeers or, um, you know, is that something as simple as Anna Green Gables or historical figures like, you know, Tom Sawyer uh, and, and Huckleberry Finn and things like that. Let's just take that and let's just make it into an anime, okay? And uh, that way they could just basically follow the works of, the, uh, you know, the literary works and that's probably much your, 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 your typical story and your plot, right? Um, again, at this time, no one really followed this kind of stuff. Okay, um, even some, you know, even something like Andrew Gables, you know, which is you know from, from you know from Canada, um, you know, no one really bothered with it. I mean, sure, later on when um, you know some some box sets and that kind of stuff came, and there's some light translation to it, then sure people got kind of got, got interested in it. You know, late in the, uh, you know, just just maybe before the the anime crash type of idea, but you know when this thing came out in '91. No one paid attention to it. Okay, we're going to the next line, and there's nothing significant on this line at all, so we will continue. Okay, and moving on, we okay, we have one significant title, Metal Jack. Um, so I bought the uh, laser disc for this one, and I was uh, actually planning to do the fan something for this one, um, you know, back in 2004. Um, but I never really actually ended up actually getting it, uh, you know, you know, finished doing the translation and actually getting it out. But, you know, again, it's it's essentially a version of Borgman, okay? Except these guys are cops, okay? And, um, you know, and just like Borgman, um, you know, when the guys are in trouble and they need to get their, you know, cybernetic armor on, they go, Borg, get on, right? And then, you know, the armor just sort of disappears and, and, and attaches and transforms on them. So these guys are obviously, you know, you know police guys. And, and of course, you know, uh, you know, when the bad guys are get, you know, beating them down, they have to do the Sentai thing and go, all right, jack on, okay? Uh, then, of course, uh, you know, the armor uh, uh, you know, attaches onto them. And of course, you know, the funny concept, which I've already mentioned before, is, well, if jack on puts on the armor, what do you say to take off the armor? Uh, I'll let you figure what that, what that is. Anyway, so... Um, you know, uh, you know, crime fighting Sentai guys, basically, uh, another excuse to sell more toys. The series didn't really do all that well, but again, still, they did heavily, pr- you know, promote it, uh, uh, you know, in, in the anime media magazines and that kind of stuff, uh, you know, as a kind of a new series, because it says it sort of is kind of like trying to copy Borgman. And for the rest of the series, there is nothing else for TV shows, uh, this, uh, year. So again, so we'll, we'll skip ahead. Okay, so we're going to continue through all the TV programs that are, like, uh, continuing on from uh, the previous week. And uh, the most significant thing is, is, of course, yeah, we still have our Dragon Ball Z going on. And we still have Ram and a Half going on. I mean, these are long series, over 100 episodes. So it's going to take a while for them to, you know, to finish. Um, now, the most significant thing is, is that uh, of the shorter series, Yawada is still running. But in this particular season, Nadia has ended... Uh, Samurai Pizza Cats has ended. Dragon Quest, uh, you know, obviously, you know, same guy does Dragon Ball Z. Um, Dragon Quest has now ended, and Rotaru 2 has ended. So a lot of these shows are now finishing up, which is good because now, uh, you know, w- w- they're now preparing to release new TV shows. And that's really good. So maybe right now, obviously, you know, this um, particular uh, season doesn't have much going on, but it's queuing itself up to have some better stuff coming up soon. Uh, the other thing I should also mention is that the both idol shows, both um, um, Idol uh, um, Yoku is is now uh, uh, over, and Sweet Mint is over. Okay, so again, no um, you know magical girl shows exa- uh, is on right now. So that leads credence to the fact that there'll, there'll be probably another one coming soon. Um, you know to fill in the gap. So so, so it's, you know 
not this episode, but next episode, you know, or you know, the the, the for the next one for, for the fall season, that kind of stuff. Um, we'll have a lot of potential because again, there's going to be now some TV slots open, so that's something to keep an eye out for. So anyway, we'll continue on to the OEVAs. Getting the OEVAs for 1991 uh, spring season. Um, we have uh, Ginga Eia Densetsu, so uh, Gal um, Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Uh, again, now after the series is finished and uh, you know the, the movie edition, now we have an OEVA version that comes out. Uh, you know, it's not a more episode of the long continuing series, so it's a uh, you know more of that. Um, well, now we have uh, something new: uh, Gundam 0083 Stardust Memory. So again, now you know uh, in the series of releasing. A whole bunch of new Gundams. Uh, you know, they just released the Gundam 0080 series, which is you know, um, um, Hir uh, Hiroko Mik Mikimoto, which the guy does Mad Cross, Megazone 23, uh, doing that kind of stuff. Now we have another artist uh, doing uh, Gundam 0083, um, so a little bit further ahead in the history. Uh, again, a, a really good sort of, adapt you know, kind of a different sort of a you know, narrowing down of that, you know, uh, the hero goes into the Gundam and you know fights to sort of a you know a, 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 a you know a, a larger enemy. Okay, now this one obviously you know uh, you know focuses on a slightly different uh, you know subset of the uh, UC Century um, sort of uh, universe, right? So uh, you know the the uncovering of these new experimental uh, GP01, GP02, G3, um, uh, you know Gundams. Uh, GPO2 being the nuclear powered, uh, you know, has a nuclear warhead. The other things that I really like about Gundam 0083 is the character designer is a uh, Toshiro uh, Karamoto. Okay, now you know he's re he was really big uh, for this because this is his really you know first big character design uh, thing. You know, Gundam 0083. He'll go on to make things like Orgus 02. He makes the the cockpit, uh, which he did with uh, Leiji Matsumoto. Uh, you know that sort of tie-in story for, inside the uh, the uh, Captain Hawk story. Um, again, uh, he also made the uh, Golden Boy, which is you know, absolutely you know great um, OEVA series. Which is you know, again, we I remember we did lots of fan subs of that, and it was really popular. So yeah, definitely do check that one out. Um, but uh, yeah, one of probably the biggest names of, of things that he's done is is he's done Cowboy Bebop, uh, the character design for that. So. Uh, again, he, you know, this is a good kickoff for his uh, career. Um, again, just some other things that are you know, big names that comes up. Uh, Wolf's Rain, he does the character design for. And even just some more modern animes, if you're interested in modern animes. He does uh, Eden, and uh, and just most recently he does um, uh, Metallic Rouge. All right, so again, good um, resume of, of, of uh, you know, good character designs and that kind of stuff. So that's, a, that's one good nice thing. The other thing that I thought was really neat about um, Gundam Dolly 3 is that, uh, again, I bought all the soundtracks and that kind of stuff for it, but one of the things they did is for the opening theme song, they, you know, just like Lotus Wars, they made an English version for each one. So uh, the um, opening theme song is a winner from uh, Miki uh, Matsubara, okay? She made an English version of the same song. Uh, and it's called Back to Paradise. Okay, so again, you, you got that duality in there. Uh, the second uh, opening theme song is called uh, Men of Destiny uh, by Mio. Right? She's the same guy who does uh, you know, things like Time for Elgin, right? Um, anyway, uh, she made an English version of Men of Destiny, and they call it, uh, she calls it Oblivion. Okay, so that's, you know, again, this is sort of one of these things that th that's not common, okay? Um, but... You know, because of the, I guess the, you know, the, the to, to help a market exposure and that kind of stuff, they made an English version for it, and um, so it's kind of neat that the, you know that they did that. Next to something like a, you know, like a Tenchi or Project Echo, you know, they don't really do lots of English mixes, so it's kind of nice that the, you know they, they did something for that. And the last one on the list here, uh, Nisla Bro, is a Bubble Boom Crash. So again, they just finished doing the all vo first eight volumes of Bubble Boom Crises. Now they decide, okay, well, yeah, because it's so six, you know, so popular, so successful. Hey, we're gonna make another one. We're gonna call it uh, the Bubblegum Crash series. Okay, now, again, really short, only three episodes in, in this set. Um, but again, you know, a lot of people want more of the night sabers and all that kind of stuff. So you know, why not? We're gonna make more OVAs for it. So it's good uh, for those people who really like that kind of stuff. They've got more coming up. Okay, so we continue on with the next line here. 
Uh, right away, the uh, first one you are on the list here is RG Veda. Now, this is really extremely popular because this is the one of the first Thoracic uh, tiles um, making it onto the market from the uh, artist group Clamp. Of course, you know that Clamp will go on to make things like Card Capra Sakura, Magical Knights Ray Earth, and, and, and X, okay, Tokyo Babylon. Uh, so really big titles, but yeah, RG Veda was, was really stylistically made. It was really kind of a nice short sort of OEVA. Um, they could have probably obviously did way more with it, but um, for what it is, it was a really nice series, and it was one of the very first things that, that Clamp came out with, uh, and it was pretty cool. Um, the next one on the list here is the uh, Horono uh, Tenkosai, and now this one was really, really, really Nobody knew what it was, really, okay? It, I mean, you know, it's got some good names on it. I mean, it's uh, made by Gainax, right? The guys who, who will end up doing uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion has the character designer who does Project Aiko. So, I mean, you know, some big names on it. But, you know, at this time, nobody cares about boxing shows, really, right? I mean, it's, it's supposed to be, a, you know, a, a kind of a, you know, kind of a poke at, um, you know, Tomorrow's Joe, right, for example. And it's great and dandy, but at the time... No one knew what it was, and no one cared about boxing shows, so it really fell by the wayside. I mean, it, it took down, like, uh, 2017, they made a Netflix live action for it, uh, but only just relatively recently. But otherwise, yeah, this, no one knows what this anime is. And the last title on the list is Skemendeka. Okay, so this is, an, you know, an animated version of the Yo-Yo Girl, right? So this is, uh, you know... Um, Kind of like a, one of those, you know, superhero girls, but she's got the, uh, you know, the, she's got the, you know, the dead of the yo-yo thing, okay? Again, you know, it's a, my, an animated version of a kind of, uh, you know, one of these, um, you know, high school story uh, girl things. Um, and it's, you know, it's, I don't 100% like the character design, but it was pretty well done. So, you know, it's, it's only two episodes, so it's, not, it's really quick, and it was one of the first things that uh, AD Vision um, licensed and, and did, um, and, uh, you know, and, they, and it gained quite a bit of, you know, traction on that, so, um, you know, for that reason, it's a quick watch, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, one of those sort of cornerstones for getting AD Vision started, uh, you know, especially in, in, in the early days. Okay, let's go to the next uh, line here, and right off, uh, we have the uh, Maison Akaku, um, you know, I guess you can say the Deserted Island episode, um, you know, this, this is like a really sort of extended episode, like this is sort of like, you know, the series is over now, right, so now you, you know, they're gonna, you know, find some OVAs or, you know, some movies and that kind of stuff, uh, you know, later on the live action, um, just to continue, you know, making more stuff for the franchise, and so this one, they just basically said, okay, you know, uh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna take one of the episodes that is in the manga, and that they did didn't actually put in the TV series and uh, and make it up. So this one is the, uh, you know, deserted island. Uh, you know, that pretty well much has the same plot as you know Swiss Family Robinson slash Gilligan's Island. Okay, uh, they go on a boat. The boat gets shipwrecked onto an island, and uh, there we go. They they they, they have uh, the uh, mass chaos that uh, usually occurs with these uh, you know weirdos at uh, Ikaku. Okay, so. Um, Never actually did get the fans up to this one uh, because by the time we finished uh, the, the the series, we were already on to other stuff, and we never really got back to going to do this one because then you know uh, Viz already announced that they were going to license Maison Akaku, so we never bothered doing it. And in the end, uh, you know Viz never even did this one either. So uh, just an interesting sort of situation there. Um, next one, okay, is the Abrashi family. So this one is another one of those uh, early releases from AD Vision. Um, you know, it's, it's a good sort of short sort of OVA thing. Now, the thing about this one is, is I don't like the character design. Going a guy really care about, especially when it comes to female characters. So, again, this is one of those ones where it's like, you know, it's a fine, it's, you know, it's an okay watch. You know, I, it's just one of those character, you know, things that, 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 that it really bugs me about the character design. It's a pass. Um... But yeah, you, know, you might find it enjoyable. It's, uh, it's kind of kind of wacky. And the next one is um, Judge. Okay, so this is uh, another one of those situations where you know Central Park Media is just looking for garbage to pull off the uh, you know you know from the junk piles, and and they can license it really dirt cheap. Uh, so this one is you know not very significant, kind of a one shotter. It's pretty short. You know, so again, no time to do character development or anything like that. It's just it's um. 
it's one of those, uh, you know, take it or leave it sort of animes where, you know, because they don't follow up with anything, you can't get, you know, get very big character development or depth or anything. Kind of a self-contained episode of, of sorts. So the story doesn't go really anywhere. But, uh, but if you want to see what the Central Park media was pulling out of the garbage can, this is a, you know, a good example of that. Okay, so the next line we put a seat on, we got the anime Capricorn. Okay, so this is just another, one of those interesting mixes. Um, you know, you can see obviously it's uh, uh, Joni Manabe, right? The same guy who did Outlanders. And again, he's f- focusing on this new trend of anime beast girls. Okay, so kind of mix a girl with, uh, you know, some sort of animal thing, whatever, right? And, um, you know, he's already done that with Outlanders. Now he's bringing up another one. Uh, so, so now this is like a dragon girl. So this isn't like, you know, King of Thrones dragon girl. This is, you know, this is... You know, half dragon, half girl thing, right? Just like if you look even earlier, um, they just released uh, Lunar Vulgar, just uh, you know, uh, earlier in '91, which is the same theme, you know, half girl, dragon kind of thing. Um, and this sort of whole trend is starting to build up, and so we're going to get more of these sort of anamorphic type of things. Um, uh, you know, we got uh, Dragon Pink, we got uh, things like uh, you know, Nuku Nuku. Um, uh, Dominion Tank Police with the Puma Sisters, you know, you know things like that. We're going to get a lot more of that because they're realizing, hey, people got this, you know, girl animal fetish thing. So um, we're going to, you know, make more of it. So you know, be a one shotter. It's got, you know, it's, you know, you just got to take it as it is. It's uh, you know, it's the you know, the dragon, another sort of dragon girl protecting the world thing. You know, okay, it's you know, uh, you know, very very light if you want to say isekai thing, but you know, it's. <clears throat> uh, another variation, okay, so that's the, that, that's the start of this sort of, you know, trope or concept, okay, uh, and, uh, and, and they're going to run with it, right, if it's popular and it's selling, they're just going to make more of them, so if you like things like Outlanders, you know, this one you might want to check out. The next one is uh, Slow Step. Now, this guy makes a lot of those, you know, baseball love stories. So two guys on a baseball team, and they all try to go for the one girl. You know, this is just like, you know, touch or nine or any of those type of things. And, you know, if they'd drawn it better, I might have actually liked it more than like things like Orange Road and Maison Akaku at that time. But this really, you know, always fell be- in, in the background. Uh, not helping to the fact that, you know, the story was surrounded around sports. And again, you know, Sports animes and that kind of stuff just really didn't um, uh, resonate with anybody. Um, maybe not until things like Slam Dunk and that kind of stuff you know, came out. But, you know, for the most part, yeah. Baseball stories, yeah, forget it. So this is another one, you know, drawn with the same artist. Uh, yeah, so you know, I'm totally avoiding this one. And it's also being short, too, cause, cause it's, so it's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> Um, the next one, uh, Shoryu Den. Okay, so this one's kind of really cool. Again, th- themed off of, you know, the dragon, you know, ancient dragon power, that kind of stuff. But it's more like some sort of, you know, um, covert band group thing, uh, and whatnot. Um, fairly well drawn, and, um, really good story layout, right? It's, you know, th- this is actually a 12-episode sort of series. So they've got time to do things with it, they, you know, um, you know, build up the, uh, you know, suspense and, uh, you know, you know run the storyline. Uh, you know, to a full kind of uh, complete story. Um, so yeah, definitely. If you want to check out that one, you know, it's, it's kind of a, you know, like it's, it's more modern day than, than something like, let's say, for example, Yotodan or something, where you know, you know, the weapons and that kind of stuff are based off of uh, mythology and that kind of stuff. But it's you know, paced in feudal Japan time. This is more of a, a modern, you know, uh, I wouldn't say yakuza, but like you know hidden in a dark organization doing the you know the stuff right um and uh you know drawing on you know traditional uh mythical powers okay so it's kind of really kind of cool in that respect okay so we move along uh, to the next line here uh most uh, definitely the most good one right there is uh akai uh, hayate or red hayate something to be referred to it. now this is sort of again a sort of a modern day sort of i guess ninja like you know syndicate type story okay but the guys have got like you know this kind of you know really high-tech sort of armor kind of thing so if you can think of a you know let's say 
uh, something like uh, you know, like samurai troopers, but like m way more techier, like more like m like Borgman armor, okay, that kind of stuff, right? The character design is really good actually on this one. Uh, it's uh, a Chiharu Sato, okay. Um, uh, she made the the character designs for this particular show. She doesn't actually do very many other character designs per se. The only other notable thing that she does as as a character designer is is a new anime called Zombie Loan. Um, but she really, she uh, has a really huge list of th things that she's you know, been on the production of. Um, some of the big names, uh, like in classic animes, are things like uh, Area, um, Berserk, uh, Detective Conan, uh, City Hunter, Dan Cougar. I mean, the closest anime that you might kind of think and look at this uh, is, is uh, Detonator Organ. It's very, very similar to the, how this uh, uh, OVA is laid out. So very, very similar in that respect. Um, and, uh, you know, again, she's responsible for all things for most of the things like uh, key animation, uh, you know, uh, in-between animator and things like that. Uh, very, very good on that kind of thing. And the other big uh, sort of newer show that she's uh, done a lot of work on is uh, My Hero uh, Academia. So, again, this is a really good, like I said, well, uh, this for our production is actually pretty really well. A good uh, amount of story pacing and that kind of stuff. Definitely a wor worthwhile watch if you're really interested in that, you know, uh, because again, the, the, these a lot of shows are coming out like Borgman, Metal Jack, you know, kind of these sort of uh, futuristic sort of Sentai-ish type of uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, themes. And this is definitely one of these uh, really short OEVAs that I like that, okay? Okay, and we just continue along. There's nothing on this line, so I'll just keep scrolling. And nothing on this line, so keep scrolling. And yeah, so that's it. There's really nothing more in the way of OEVAs uh, for this uh, particular um, season. So we'll go on to the movies. Um, there is only one movie. It is uh, Nadia, um, which makes sense because you know the Nadia TV series just ended, you know now, right? So like you know because it's no longer in the the TV listings uh, here now. So obviously the uh, series has now finished its run, and of course the usual thing to do is either put an OVA or a movie after that just to kind of you know maybe to summarize it or the ending, for example, like Dan Cougar. Um, you know you need to finish it off. So here you go. Here's a movie. And there we go. So again, the only movie is Nadia. So again, if you have you know finished watching the series and you want to get a you know kind of a, a little more a more of it, uh, they just released the movie for that uh, for uh, this particular season, and that is the only movie. Okay, and the finally we go to the you know TV specials and that kind of stuff. Um, normally, there isn't usually anything in this section, but there is one thing I want to point out, and this is this uh, uh, Michiru Toki no Mokuni. Um, you know, some people refer to this as uh, toward a time of trouble or beyond the time or something like that. Uh, this anime is based on a novel uh, ba uh, from uh, Suzuki Koji uh, named Paradise, okay? Um, you know, basically these people, uh, a nomadic group trying to look for, uh, you, know, a, you know, a place to, you know, to, 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 to live and, uh, and uh, you know, make their civilization from. Uh, and that's you know that's the, the idea of it, right? Um, now, normally, uh, you know, with these TV specials, it's they are sort of really very one shot. You know, they usually don't have you know things that associate after with them, so they don't release a DVD or anything like that. It's just sort of you, you put on TV and then that, that's it, right? So, a lot of times, um, it might show up as rental video or something sometimes, but other than that, it's really hard to find this thing. Um, but what captured me about it is is that. Um, the picture that the, the or the promotional poster that they have in it, I look at it and go, you know, it looks so familiar. It looks like something out of like Shirato or something, or maybe some other kind of thing that that, that, that just doesn't ring right, hundred percent true with me. So I kind of thought maybe Blue Seed maybe or something like that, because uh, you know the female character in the picture. So I thought, okay, I, you know, I'm going to look it up. And so uh, with a little bit of uh, you know digging, I decided you know decided to look into what it is. The character designer for it is a uh, Takeyuki Goto, okay, and um, again, very uh, you know famous um, character designer at this particular moment. Um, at the, you know in this era, he's known for things like uh, Blue Seed, Video Garai. Um He will um, the most significant thing that kind of really caught my attention was he does the character design for the uh, Kimigura Orange Road movie. Okay, 
Because you notice the movie, the, the, the you know the character design on the movie changed a little bit. Well, yeah, that, part of that is because he did the character design for that particular part of it. Okay. Um, other more more recent uh, things that he does, he does uh, the character design for Hunter X Hunter, and he also does the stand a lot of the sort of parts of the standalone complex, as well as Appleseed Thirteen. Okay, and I continue looking down the guy's list, and I realized when you finally get all the way to the bottom. Under the name Zillion, and I realized, oh yeah, that guy in front looks exactly like JJ. So, you know, the way the eyes are drawn, is like, okay, of course, yes, he's the character designer for the original Zillion. And so, um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a pretty good repertoire of uh, animes that this guy's worked on. Definitely you know, a nice character design on that. So I figured, okay, you know, you know for an hour type of thing, it's, you know, maybe, maybe worth checking out. I noticed that there's not very much in the way of, tra you know, translated or you know, social versions of it. Um, there are versions available on YouTube that you can probably put the, the, the you know, the, the, the automatic generated CC subtitles on it and, you know, let the AI try to figure it out for you. So definitely if you're a person that's, you know, uh, you know want to experiment with absolutely the most, um, you know, rarest and the obscurest type of animes, uh, this one might be de definitely one to check out because yeah, the character design, you know, the character designer, is, you know, has some credit accreditation to it. Um, there's very little information known about it other than the fact that it's based on a novel. Um, uh, you know, I've already tried to listen to some of the character, uh, you know, to the, the voice actors and stuff like that, and it, th there seems to be some famous people in it. Um, I can't identify them immediately, but you know, it, it, you know, it does have some production value to it. Uh, it just might be a little bit hard to find, um, but definitely something uh, you know, that sort of might surprise you. Uh, other than that, yeah, that's uh, sort of all the f things for this particular session for a 1991 spring session. Um, again, I've updated the um, uh, the uh, history of fan anime, um, you know, file reservoir there. So now that uh, if you go down below and click the uh, anime database, you also get uh, the uh, you know, media training instructions. You also get the the um, uh, the database spreadsheet that I use to make. The, this uh, my anime list th thing for both the 1980s and the 1990s and the master sort of top 30 of 1980s countdowns so of all the 30 titles for both the OEVAs, the TVs, and the movies. Again, all are now posted on that link below. So again, if you want to click it and then you want to you know, download a copy for yourself, um, by all means, the links are below. All right? All right, hope you find that really interesting. And again, we'll help you getting into more episodes uh, as we go through the whole entire decade of the 1990s, all right? So, until next time, I will see you again.